For centuries, the Netherlands has been at war with the sea, a country where nearly one-third of the land lies below sea level. The Dutch have faced a constant battle to reclaim and protect their land from the waters that once threatened to swallow it. Through a combination of innovation, perseverance, and sheer necessity, they transformed their geography, turning what was once sea into fertile land. Today, the Netherlands stands as a testament to the power of human ingenuity, where the balance between land and water has become a delicate, ongoing struggle. As early as the Middle Ages, the Dutch began their efforts to tame the waters that surrounded them. The first step was to build dikes, long, raised embankments of earth, to hold back the encroaching sea. These dikes, simple at first, grew more sophisticated over time as the Dutch expanded their understanding of water management. By the 15th century, they had invented a revolutionary tool, the windmill. Windmills harnessed the power of the wind to drain water from low-lying land, turning marshes and shallow waters into usable farmland. This led to the creation of polders, areas of reclaimed land that once lay beneath the sea. Each new polder was surrounded by dikes, with windmills working tirelessly to pump water out and keep the land dry. This process didn't just transform the landscape, it reshaped the Dutch economy. The newly reclaimed land became fertile ground for agriculture, giving rise to farms and settlements where there had once been only water. Over time, these innovations allowed the Netherlands to expand its territory and increase its agricultural output, laying the foundation for the country's future prosperity. In the winter of 1953, the Netherlands faced one of its darkest hours. A fierce storm swept across the North Sea, driving massive surges of water over the dikes that had protected the Dutch coastline for centuries. The result was catastrophic. More than 1,800 people lost their lives. Tens of thousands of homes were destroyed, and vast swathes of land were swallowed by the sea. This disaster shook the nation to its core. For centuries, the Dutch had fought the sea, but this flood revealed the fragility of their defenses. It was a wake-up call, showing that their battle with water was far from over. In the aftermath, the government vowed that such a tragedy would never happen again. This marked a turning point in Dutch water management, setting the stage for some of the most ambitious engineering projects the world had ever seen. Today, much of the land that defines the Netherlands was once underwater. The Noorduist Polder, one of the first large-scale polder projects, stands as a testament to Dutch engineering. Once submerged, it is now home to thriving farms and towns, where rich soil supports agriculture that feeds the country and beyond. But the most ambitious of all Dutch land reclamation projects is Flevoland. This province is the largest artificial island in the world, entirely reclaimed from the sea, where there was once water, now there are cities, forests, and farmlands. Flevoland is an engineering marvel, showcasing how the Dutch have continually pushed the boundaries of what's possible. At the heart of this transformation are the Ijsselmeer and Markerward lakes. Originally part of the Zuider Zee, a large saltwater inlet, they were transformed into freshwater lakes with the construction of the Afsluitdijk, a massive dam completed in 1932. The dam not only protected the land from the sea, but also allowed for the creation of polders that would become some of the most fertile land in the country. Today, these reclaimed areas contribute significantly to the Dutch economy, supporting agriculture, urban development, and industry. The success of Dutch land reclamation is built on centuries of innovation in water management. At the heart of this process was the windmill, far more than just an iconic symbol of the Netherlands. These windmills were vital tools, pumping water out of polders and draining the land so it could be cultivated. Powered by the ever-present winds, they enabled the Dutch to claim land from the sea, one polder at a time. As technology advanced, so did Dutch water management techniques. Modern pumping stations using electricity and powerful turbines have replaced the windmills. These stations run day and night, keeping the polders dry and ensuring that the land remains usable even during times of heavy rain or high water levels. And standing between the land and the sea are the dikes, the first and most crucial line of defense. Over time, 
these simple earthworks evolved into complex, reinforced structures capable of withstanding the powerful forces of the North Sea. Today's dikes are feats of engineering, designed to protect the reclaimed land from storm surges and rising sea levels. In response to the devastation of the 1953 flood, the Netherlands launched the Delta Works, one of the most ambitious engineering projects in history. This network of dams, sluices, locks, and storm surge barriers protects the southwestern coast from the North Sea. The Oosterscheldekering is the most impressive component. It's not just a dam, it's a series of large, movable gates that stretch across nine kilometers. Under normal conditions, the gates remain open, allowing seawater to flow freely and preserve the tidal ecosystem. However, during storms and high tides, the gates can be lowered to block the sea, protecting the land behind it from flooding. The design balances flood protection with environmental preservation. Another key structure, the Haring Vliet Dam, helps control river outflow and sea inflow, managing water levels while allowing fish migration and tidal flow. Together, these structures have dramatically reduced the risk of flooding and are considered one of the seven wonders of the modern world, ensuring the safety of the Dutch people living below sea level. But the Dutch didn't stop there. Near the port city of Rotterdam, the Meeslandkering, the largest movable storm surge barrier in the world, was built to guard against rising tides and storm surges. This massive structure consists of two floating gates, each as large as the Eiffel Tower laid on its side. These gates remain open under normal conditions, allowing ships to pass through the Nieuwe Waterweg, one of the busiest maritime routes in the world. When sea levels are predicted to rise by more than three meters due to storm surges or extreme tides, the barrier is activated. The gates are floated into position across the waterway, and then massive ballast tanks are filled with water, causing the gates to sink to the riverbed, effectively sealing off the waterway and protecting Rotterdam and its surrounding areas from flooding. The closing process takes around two hours and is carefully calculated based on weather predictions and water levels. Once the danger has passed, the water in the ballast tanks is pumped out, allowing the gates to float back to their resting positions, reopening the waterway. This system is only used in extreme conditions, but stands ready as a critical line of defense for one of the world's largest ports. As the climate changes, the Netherlands faces a new set of challenges. Rising sea levels and more frequent storms threaten the delicate balance between land and water. The cost of maintaining reclaimed land and the complex system of flood defenses continues to rise. Despite their achievements, the Dutch know that the sea remains a constant and unpredictable force. In response, the Netherlands has embraced sustainability and adaptive water management. From designing nature-based solutions to allowing controlled flooding in certain areas, the Dutch are constantly innovating to ensure their defenses are both effective and sustainable. Their focus now is not just on keeping water out, but on living with water, finding ways to work with nature to protect their future. In the face of an uncertain climate, the Netherlands continues to lead the world in water management, showing how a country built from the sea can adapt and thrive. The Netherlands' story of land reclamation is one of determination, innovation, and survival. For centuries, they have battled the sea, transforming water into land and turning a natural threat into an opportunity. From the earliest dikes and windmills to the modern delta works and mace landkering, the Dutch have shown the world what is possible when engineering and human resilience come together. But this is a story that isn't finished. As the sea rises, so do the challenges. The Dutch continue to adapt, finding new ways to protect their land and live with water in a changing world. Their journey stands as a reminder that innovation is a constant process, especially in the face of an uncertain future. Thank you for watching. This has been Atlas Cove, where we explore the stories that shape our world.